Hello, and uh, welcome back to the Barrett channel once again with myself, Ollie, for a brand new video. Today, I just want to mention a few things. Um, there was a few comments in the last video that I filmed in this position, um, thinking that it was a green screen that I was filming in front of, which I thought was pretty funny, uh, because this is actually the communal area that I do live in. Uh, it, I can understand what you mean, because it is very artificial, um, but, you know, it's one of them. It's the place I live, so I don't want you uh, fretting about it being a green screen. Um, secondly, I'm going to be referencing to the current situation in China as the CRV, just to try and avoid demonetization, actually, because, um, you know, we do love creating content for you all. Absolutely. Uh, it's our passion. We like doing it. But it can be a bit of a kick in the teeth when a lot of effort and time has gone into the research, the, the editing, the, you know, all what goes into making a video to it then be demonetized straight away. So I'm going to be doing that. Uh, just so you know. Saying that, if you do want to uh, go the extra mile to support us, you can do so by donating to us on these platforms, which I will put the graphics up on the screen for just a second. So thank you very much for that. Today I'm going to be getting into um, how technology is being cultivated and harnessed to overcome and to, to sort of fight against the outbreak here in China. Um, it's pretty impressive, actually. You know, there's there's some really interesting ways that technology has been used here um, that you're not going to want to sort of miss. So make sure you stay tuned for the whole video to, to watch it. Um, I just want to mention I have made a video previously that is about the precautions and the measures that are being taken here on the ground as we are in Shenzhen. Um, sort of the ones that you won't see on international media. Um, a lot of things, a lot of precautions are being taken. So I will pop a card at the top of the screen here where you can go and watch that at the end of the video too and a link in the description if I do remember. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to get straight into it. So China are marshalling their mass surveillance cameras to fight the outbreak. So basically, I'm going to start with a story that happened a few days ago. So we'll hear the story goes. So a few days ago, a, a man from Hangzhou went to Wenzhou for a business trip. And on his return, he found that he was actually contacted by local officials telling him that uh, because there's been a spate of um, cases arisen in Wenzhou, um, he's actually you know, been at high risk of being infected and he's been requested to stay indoors and self-quarantine for 14 days. So after 12 days, the man got incredibly bored and he decided that he was going to go out early and he visited um, a lake when he was quickly contacted by both his boss and the police again. Um, telling him that he'd been spotted by cameras uh, using facial recognition and that he hadn't yet served his 14-day quarantine. And he was told to go back home and his business, his company, were warned about this. Um, so you can make your own assumptions and opinions about, you know, sort of this situation. Um, I'm just giving you the facts and what, what's happened and uh, how technology has been used here. I'm not going to be giving... I'm not going to be giving it too much of a subjective um, sort of opinion on it. So, um, yeah, basically, you know, facial recognition is being used left, right and center by these mass surveillance cameras to keep people serving their quarantines, their self quarantines. Um, as well, the the a lot of the cameras, especially in like entrances to metro stations and uh, airports and things like that, they are actually using thermal sensors to. Um, look, I'll put a couple of graphics on the screen here. They're actually using thermal sensors to to show if people have you know low grade fevers and you know they might be taken aside if they are shown to be showing uh, excessive sort of temperatures and uh, fever like symptoms as there's a lot of companies that have big data um, there are actually mobile phone apps that uh, people are able to be contacted if someone has been on a flight or a train and then there's become a known um, case the people that are surrounding them or the people that were on the flight with them are able to be contacted um, because they are likely to have picked up the uh, the infection too. So um, again, just, just the ability to get into contact with l people left, right and centre, um, you know, who may have come into contact with, with the infection is just 
phenomenal you know there's there's nowhere else in the world they'd have the capacity of information and data to, to be able to do that as well again on mobile phone apps which i will show you here you are able to actually see where confirmed cases are living um on the app you can scout around your area and see that oh there's this person um you know lives here and they're they've got a confirmed case and they're 500 meters away um you know there are there might be some grumbling about the intrusion that, that this is causing on you know sort of people's privacy but from what i see you know especially when there's a global health emergency and a national health emergency people are not only accepting it but they're actually embracing it um i've not actually seen anyone sort of complain about it because i think to them they see it as you know use all the technology you possibly can to to stop the to stop the outbreak you know and i can see their point totally because people who you know rave about so much privacy they don't think about things like this you know until it happens um the ability to be able to contact people who have been in contact with confirmed cases uh is is massively going to reduce the chances that they're going to go out and sort of spread it further uh so yeah i can you know I, I, all i see is that people are actually embracing this this uh intrusion of privacy secondly we've got uh, drones are actually using their crop sprayers to spray disinfectant over enormous areas so dji which are a shenzhen based company um are also the leading manufacturers in in drone technology um they've got volunteers that are actually um they've got company volunteers that are actually trying to spread disinfectant over three million square meters um over just four days which is pretty much the entirety of shenzhen um, you know every nook and cranny which is just it's just madness you know that they're able to harness this advanced technology um that where previously it was just used in farming to uh sort of fight against the outbreak i think is i think it's amazing um you know why not harness to this is this is the thing like from 2003 where we had the previous outbreak with sars and uh, the technology has gotten so much better since then that you know the ability to fight it is is much higher not only are the drones being used for disinfectant spraying they're actually being used to disperse large crowds as well um i'm going to show you a funny video here where the <laughs> these these old women weren't wearing masks and at this time you know 100 percent of people should be wearing masks outside at all times and this drone actually has speakers on and someone's able to <laughs> to speak out to these people and uh, obviously, you know, they're probably not quite up to date with the new technology. So they were looking up at, at it as if it was some sort of alien uh, thing from the future. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, also, the drones were used. I'm, I'm sure you heard about the, we've mentioned it in a couple of videos as well, that the, the hospital that was built in Wuhan in, in just sort of like 10 days, the drones were actually providing light the sort of mobile light for the workers as they were working through the night as well so you know multiple different ways that uh, that drone technology is being used so moving on from the drone technology we're moving on to robots now kind of it feels like i'm in a sci-fi movie talking about all of these things but you know it's reality now this is, we're living in 2020 it's it's mad anyway so yeah robots are assisting medical staff in hospitals which is just amazing because they know they need all the help they can get you know mad mad respect for these people um who are you know putting themselves at risk so thankfully they've got some robots to help them out the robots are actually helping in a bunch of different ways they're they're delivering medicines to doctors and nurses and uh infected patients they're delivering hot meals quilts um clothing for for the staff members as well as they go they can go around and collect rubbish as well um, the cameras are actually, sorry, the, the robots are all equipped with uh, incredibly high-tech cameras, ones which can scan up to 10 people at different temperatures at one time. So again, they're scanning with thermal sensors to see sort of the temperatures of people um, in case, you know, the people coming in and out or the people who are in the ward who need urgent attention. And not only that, when they do detect a um, high temperature, it's able to simultaneously take snapshots, high definition snapshots, 
and then that can be backed up to the computer facial recognition ai works on it and they they know exactly you know who that is so again just just incredible technology being used so moving on from that big big tech giants here in china are offering out their um technology to the people who are studying on the virus um, to help sort of combat the outbreak as well uh, baidu which is the leading search engine here in china and alibaba which is an enormous e-commerce platform they've both offered out their um, gene sequencing ai algorithm tools to help find a solution which is brilliant alibaba said last week that they are partnering with the global health drug discovery institute from beijing in where they want to collaborate to develop an open source data platform piece of software to help track the virus through ai so baidu as i mentioned before they've actually opened up something called linear fold which is an rna prediction algorithm uh, this they've given this technology to genetic testing agencies epidemic prevention centers and scientific research institutes around the world one of the beneficiaries of the technology said it reduced prediction of the study to CRV's RNA secondary structure from 55 minutes to 27 seconds. So what an improvement that is. That's going to allow diversion to better um, to, to, to move their focus to better understand the virus and to sort of come up with the production of a, a, a vaccine as well, which is fantastic. Google are actually doing their part as well. They've launched a um, SOS alert and information directly in the search bar. Uh, they mention the WHO, the World Health Organization, uh, is actually stamped below a lot of YouTube videos now as well. I don't know if you've seen that below ours, but every time I go to watch a video, most of the time it's stamped underneath the video um, for constant sort of updates and information on the virus. Facebook and Instagram as well, they are actively scanning posts at all times to prevent the spread of misinformation of the virus, which... Um, as we've spoke about a lot, you know, there's a lot of rumors and speculation and sensationalism that's spreading around at all times, you know, on, on sort of um, different YouTube channels, uh, ones which I won't mention. But anyway, that brings me to the end of this video. I really hope you did enjoy it. Um, if you did, you know, if you did get this far as well, thank you ever so much for watching. Uh, please smash a thumbs up because it really does help get the message out there. It does help boost us into those algorithms uh, which is brilliant um, if you do like the content on the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, ring those bells as well so you never miss one of our uploads as always until next time bye bye